good time. You know, they're running around, they're hitting each other. You know, they all have a little bit different style, but they're having a good time. And they're in the Soviet Union. <laughs> this was the first project that was done by an American girl, a Los Angeles singer, happens to go to Russia, meets these incredible guys, decides to sneak out their music, put out an album, put out a video that she does it all herself. So for the first time, this is something real that people aren't afraid to look at, which was great because the main reason I did the album was for, you know, young people and people in their 20s. I think they were the ones that really needed this and needed to see their counterparts, that there were their counterparts in the Soviet Union people they could identify with, people that they could have a bond with. Um, what happened was that the album, when it hit, and the press wrote on it, and they all just loved it. Everything about it was so positive. I realized it wasn't just young kids that were getting into it. It was even older people, and a lot of people in their 40s and 50s, it reminded them a lot of the 60s, these bands. The way they have to record, you know, on the amateur equipment, the way they have to play in these halls that the sound systems are terrible, the light man is the same light man for everybody, so it looks, you know, the lights are on and off, you never know when, that it was, um, you know, it brought back a lot of memories for people that went through the 60s in that music scene. What has happened since Red Wave? Of course, when it came out, there were some scandals in the Soviet Union, and I had problems because the Soviets were angry. I did it illegally. Uh, they wanted the royalty money. They did not like the word underground on the record because to them, underground, is a very illegal word. I was trying to explain that to, them, to them that underground in the United States is a cool word. To be considered an underground band, like the Smiths, the Cult, you know, the Talking Heads were considered an underground band. It means you're uncompromising. It means you're um, not mainstream, which are what these bands are. Um, eventually, I worked it out with the Soviets. You know, we kind of went on for many, many months arguing back and forth. They wanted me to change this. I was giving reasons why I didn't want to change it. They wanted money. I was giving reasons why I didn't want to give them money. They wanted to sue me. On and on and on. And finally, we at least came to some settlement that, okay, we're going to let Red Wave go. I, I signed a paper basically just saying I acknowledge the fact I did it illegally, that I didn't go through the proper channels, I didn't give you the royalties, um, so I will give you the small compensation and in turn you won't sue me. Certainly the CIA, the CIA and the KGB have questioned me here, and the FBI there had been questioning people about me, that they were all wondering what I was doing all these years. You have both sides wondering, you know, is she a spy? Someone going back and forth that much. That they finally, from everybody, realized I was just a musician writing songs with them and working with them. Suddenly, you know, this album comes out, that they think, God darn it. How could you do this without us knowing it? So basically it was just they don't like being embarrassed. They don't like being the last to know. But I think the reason why I was even allowed those visas to come back and deal with them about, you know, Red Wave was underneath it. I think, I think they believed in their hearts, even though they would admit it, that it was a very positive album. The songs are not political. And that's another shock to kids. They see the album and they, they see the videos and they see the kind of what the guy, the way the guys look and they think, wow, they must all want to defect. They must, you know, write real political songs. I say, no, they don't write political songs and almost all of them want to stay in the Soviet Union. They're very happy living there. So these unofficial bands are not singing blatantly about politics. They're not singing, we hate it here and we want to leave. What they're singing about most of these bands are being happy within yourself, being able to dream. Um, and having some energy, getting up and doing something. Um, the typical Soviet way was to be brought up to believe you were going to work all day, you're going to get drunk all night, you're going to work all day, you're going to get drunk the next night, and on and on, and that's it. These musicians have always been singing in their songs that there's more to life. We can be here and be happy. I mean, the way these guys live their life, they would live it the same way anyway. They're doing things that we do here. I come back and tell my friends stories, and they say, you can do that in the Soviet Union? You know, they get away with everything that kids do everywhere. So that is really the message in their songs. What Red Wave helped do, and also with Gorbachev's um, whole glass nose and opening up, is to change the system. Red Wave pushed the Soviets into thinking, shoot, we've been trying to get our rock and roll together in terms of exporting it for years. Here comes some American girl, and she puts it together and puts it out on her own. You know, they started realizing that these are the bands that Americans are going to look at and say, wow, this is neat, they are people like us. Let, let's collaborate, let's do something. That they started changing their system a little bit. And Aquarium is now an official band. But they 
have their creative control. They didn't have to join a concert organization and go out on tours. They basically play when they want to. And so the system is changing, even in terms of rock music. Suddenly, rock music is like the most official form of art in the Soviet Union over there. Another future event coming up, which of course is the most important to me, is that I'm getting married. And I'm getting married to the guitar player in Kino, whose name is Yuri Kasparian. Yuri is Russian, his band is there, that's his home, that's his family, he wants to stay there. As much as I love going to the Soviet Union, America is my home and I certainly wouldn't give it up um, for anywhere else. But I do like going back and forth quite often, you know, every two or three months. What I hope will happen is that the Soviets will allow Yuri to come back and forth with me, meaning that the two of us will just keep going back and forth every couple months between um, the United States and the Soviet Union, which a lot of people think is funny. They, you know, say I've heard of long distance marriages and uh, commuting, um, but in the United States and Russia, you can't really get much further. A lot of people, you know, were very worried and brought up, you know, the fact that there could be a lot of problems. His parents were very upset in the beginning, so were my parents. You know, but when you're lucky enough to find somebody like that, that you really love, that is the right person, you say, screw the rest of the stuff. You'll, you know, the problems come later. You know, how many people are lucky enough in life to really find that special person that's perfect for you?